views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to Open 2.0, the show that opens the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected through us through social media at BronxNet TV. I'm your host, Sarai Godoy, and we've got a great show for you today. Our guest is the Commissioner of Media and Television, Annie de Castillo. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks. So you want to tell us a little bit about what the Commissioner of Media does? Yes. Ways? So, um, my position uh, is the head of the agency, which is known as the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. Uh, we actually started as the f uh, Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcast about 50 years ago to coordinate film and television production on location throughout New York City. Mm -hmm. And in the last three years, we've expanded to include uh, music, advertising, publishing, and digital content. We also oversee the city's uh, television and radio broadcast network, mm -hmm. which is NYC Media and we just opened the Office of Nightlife. So it's a pretty expansive portfolio that we're overseeing. Wow. You seem like you have a pretty busy day. Yes. <laughs> you want to tell us more about what your standard day looks like? Uh, I wish I had a standard day. Every day is a little bit different. You know, the media and entertainment industry in New York is very exciting, and there is always uh, new developments. But typically, I will get up, check email, uh, take my son to school, and then I'll either go uh, visit a community partner or an elected official to talk to them about film and television production. I'll have staff meetings, uh, or I'll do a set visit, which is often really exciting. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You move along a bit. Uh, there, there are a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings. Sometimes I wonder how I'm supposed to actually get any work done, but no, it's, it's just a great way to really educate folks about what media and entertainment brings to New York City and understand what the needs are to make sure that this industry continues to thrive here. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, is there any other locations that you work at? Not so we actually office. have two offices. We, we actually have two offices, one by City Hall at 1 Center Street. That's where our main executive offices are. Mm -hmm. And then we retain the original film office, which is uptown in the Ed Sullivan Theater Building, which is where, where Colbert show films. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how long have you been in this position for? I've been with the city agency for five years. I started off as general counsel, and then I moved into chief operating officer, and then I was appointed to the commissioner of media and entertainment position in May, April of this year. Mm. So you've been there for a long time. Yes. <laughs> Is there anything that sparked your interest to go towards media? Mm. Uh, you know, I had worked in the arts. I did an arts internship when I was in college. I worked for uh, an avant-garde artist doing multimedia work with him, did a little bit of publishing of some anthology work and some audio recording. And then when I graduated, I ended up getting an internship with Channel 13 uh, at, Ameri at the American Masters series, and that was, that was kind of what led me down this road. From there, I went on to work for a couple of other PBS series, American Masters Frontline, and then I ended up working in independent film production in Austin for about five years. Oh wow, yeah. have you been to other places uh, the world? So, well, I was in Boston, and then I was in Austin, and then I worked on a documentary about Imelda Marcos and had an opportunity to work in the Philippines for a bit. Oh wow, yeah. in your hometown? Uh, no, my hometown is New York, but, oh, really? uh, but my parents, yes, they are from the Philippines. How has your um, background as a New Yorker helped, for, helped you be a commissioner in the mayor's office? You know, uh, having been born and bred in New York City, I really care a lot about uh, the, the growth of opportunities for New York City residents. And then I'm basically serving a career that has really helped propel, uh, I'm basically serving an industry that's helped propel my career over the years. So it's a really exciting opportunity to be able to have uh, some influence over how the industry grows here in New York and make sure that we continue to provide opportunities for New Yorkers. What are some of your responsibilities in your position apart from So uh, as I mentioned, we have those four primary areas where we're overseeing the broadcast and television network. We're overseeing on-location filming throughout the five boroughs. 
We're trying to create a sustainable nighttime economy through the Office of Nightlife. And then we're also developing workforce and education initiatives so that New Yorkers can understand what kind of opportunities and career paths they can pursue in, in the industries that we're serving. Wow. Do you want to tell us more about film projects that influence the, the position in your mayor's office? I wouldn't say that film projects influence the position per se, but we. So what I would say is we actually serve, uh, we have, when I started at the film office, we had 24 episodic television series filming here in New York. That was five years ago. We now have over 70, so production has really uh, boomed in the last five years. Uh, we have uh, filming here, right here in the Bronx actually, we've had Blue Bloods, Orange is the New Black, SVU is often here. Those are just a handful of, uh, just to name a few of the productions that are filming here. And then this year, we had the good fortune of having three major motion pictures filming here, West Side, Sto uh, West Side Story, In the Heights, and Clifford the Big Red Dog. And I believe Clifford and uh, West Side Story have filmed here in the Bronx as well. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. A lot of those shows are really popular here. Yes. Um, what inspired you to initiate these programs to expand the media in the New York City? Well, I mean, media has always been a part of New York City's uh, economy. It's, New York has always been a thriving center, center for media and culture. And again, we just want to make sure that as the industry grows, that creates opportunities for New Yorkers in terms of employment and small businesses mm -hmm. to really thrive. And so we have a number of workforce initiatives uh, that New York City residents can participate in. A number of them are free. We have the Made in New York Production Assistant Training Program, which provides training in entry-level positions in production. We have the mm -hmm. Post-Production Training Program, which prepares uh, individuals interested in the post-production world. We also have a Theater Workforce Development Program in partnership with Roundabout Theater. And then we have an animation program where we teach young people, actually 1,200 students in, in, in variety of uh, coding and uh, yeah. skills for animation. It's really yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your help. Please hold that thought because we have a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Open 2.0. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with Anne de Castillo, Commissioner of Media and Television with the Mayor's Office. Welcome back. <laughs> what is the most memorable experience you had as a commissioner? Ah, the most memorable experience I've had as a commissioner, well, I've only been commissioner since April. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd say probably being appointed commissioner is the most <laughs> memorable experience. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's just a really exciting field that we're serving. And so I can't point to any one experience. I think just knowing that every day we're doing something to advance the industry here in New York mm -hmm. is, uh, is memorable and exciting in and of itself. Oh. Well, since you haven't been in the position so long, what do you look forward to as a being more commissioner? You know, I really look forward to uh, continuing the flow of production in New York City. Uh, we, uh, the film and television production alone brings in 130,000 jobs mm -hmm. and over $9 billion to the New York economy. Through that, combined with all of the other sectors that we're serving, translates to 300,000 jobs. And 
104 billion in the New York City economy. So I, what I really focused on is making sure that we continue to grow those industries and create opportunities for New Yorkers. Wow, oh, that's great. Do you have any like initiating programs for New Yorkers? So some of the, we're going to continue some of the programs that I um, that I just listed. Uh, the Made in New York PA program in particular has a new cycle starting. We also have a podcast certificate program where we're accepting applications right now for people to learn about podcasting. Oh, and quite importantly, is we have a women's fund for film, theater television and music is really the New York Women's Fund for Media, Music, and Theater. And there we're providing finishing funds for projects led by female identified creatives. And the idea is to really fund a critical mass of content so that we mm. can help with the gender, help advance gender equity in media and entertainment. So those applications are open now and they close in October. And so we're really encouraging uh, women working in film, theater, music, uh, to apply for those grants. Mm. Uh, last year, earlier this year, we awarded $1.5 million to 63 projects, and, wow. and one of them just made it uh, uh, to, Vienna, to the Biennale in Venice. Wow, yeah. that's great. I like the help you're doing for young women. I feel like it's a, an area that needs to grow. Yes, I, the, the representation of women in the media and entertainment sector is still uh, is, is pretty dismal, and so our office has really committed to building um, equity in, in yeah. the field. So the Women's Fund is one way. Another way is we have a program called Sound Thinking NYC and that's providing training for high school girls, uh, sort of training and career exposure for uh, work in sound engineering. Wow. Um, I guess you have traveled around the world. Mm -hmm. Have you traveled around the world as a commissioner? Uh, what has been it's an not, experience? Th so uh, the, the role of the commissioner really is, as a, as a city government job, it's really to uh, draw business here to New York City and so there isn't a ton of international travel. We're fortunate to be at the crossroads of many people coming to New York City. You know, we're really a global cro crossroads and so we have the advantage of having industry and um, stakeholders coming through the city all the time and so the opportunity to meet with them and help them understand what we're trying to achieve, we can just do that right here in our backyard. That's true. There's mm -hmm. diversity all over New York City. But I would say my travels, you asked if I had um, done some traveling, and I certainly did. Um, I've been to Europe and Asia. There's certainly there's many more places I'd like to travel mm -hmm. to, but I think traveling outside of the U.S. really gives you a strong perspective and a deep understanding of cultural awareness and, and the need to really create opportunities for as many diverse voices as possible mm -hmm. so that we can just have greater understanding and yeah. and grow our cultural. Has any of those travels inspired you to do better? Like, I'm sorry? Have uh, your travels uh, to the other countries, like, do they like uh, have like a positive effect on your like being role as a commissioner? I, I think in my role as commissioner and just uh, in my world view, yes, certainly my travels have really opened me up to other cultures, realizing that there, everyone has a different point of view, there are different ways of doing things. and. I, I would say probably trying to just create a space in which everyone can do work mm -hmm. uh, in a way that makes sense for them. Yeah. Do you have any words of wisdom for the next commissioner and officer? Oh, for the next commissioner, we just, you know, we have an incredible city and incredible talent here. And so anyone would be fortunate to sit in this role and make sure that New York remains a media capital. <laughs> That's great. Do you have any last thoughts about uh, shows that you want to, like, tell New York City about? Uh, you know, we have so many shows filming here. I would be remiss if I was to point to any in particular, although I would say I would encourage folks uh, in the fall, a couple of productions that shot here in the city in the last year, The Irishman is coming out, The Godfather of Harlem is coming out, um, and uh, Motherless Brooklyn just announced that it's coming out uh, at the New York Film Festival this year. So there's plenty to see, mm -hmm. uh, and it's made right here in New York City. Stay tuned, guys. This is great information, but for our viewers, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today. Um, thank you for having me. We'd like to thank our guest and the viewer for us for joining us. If you missed any part of today's show, you can tune into the re-cable cast of Open 2.0 anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. I'm Sarai Godoy. Thank you and good night.